Yeah, some days I feel unfazed Like when I'm with my friends with a cut raise And on Monday, I got a gun raise Suicidal, do a die until hump day Then I go right back at it like an automatic More drinks, more songs, more beats to rap I need a shrink, I'm gone More time keeps passing, no watch, no thoughts at all Just a hat, new era Rep my P's and those O's Need a Phillies with my orange and black to feel home From Citizens Bank back to Camden Yard Took the tail of two cities and trust we go hard Trust we go hard, yes we go hard You said we go hard, I said we go hard Rockin' my Bob Cousy, stockin' up on the loose Did the lyrics come easy, but the life is a doozy And yes, I'm choosy, and no, I won't settle But I still take pop off over that kettle Cause I'm talking bigger picture, and yes, I'm gonna hit you with the... In Australia, there are many different modes of transport, and for many years now, there's been one mode of transport that stood out from the crowd and destroyed all competition, and that of course is the AU Falcon. But while it is true that driving an AU Falcon is the best way to get around Australia, it isn't the only way. As you may know, there's roughly 25 million Australians, but as of the year 2020, there was only roughly 45,000 registered AU Falcons in the entire country. So that means that 24 million Australians have to find a different mode of transport, and that's where public transport comes in. For the last hundred or so years, public transport has been helping corridor drivers and people without their license get to and from work, school and other important things. So you'd think with over a hundred years of trial and error and learning from mistakes, catching public transport in Australia would be as nice and relaxing as driving an AU Falcon. Well of course not. So in today's video, I'll be going through everything that you need to know about the Australian public transport system, but more specifically, Melbourne's public transport system, simply because I live here, and for some reason, which I still don't understand, it's the world's third most livable city. So now it's time for me to stop the yapper and get into it. The first thing I'm going to talk about is all the different people that you meet on the public transport network that you need to avoid. First up, we have ticket inspectors. Very recently, the company that runs Melbourne's public transport network decided to up the daily fare to $10 a day. And as we've learnt many times before, whenever a company decides to up the price of a product by a ridiculous amount without actually making the product any better, their customer base responds by not paying. And public transport is no different. Which is why Public Transport Victoria pay people minimum wage to go around and catch other people who are also earning minimum wage and fine them 300 bucks. But you see, it's not all doom and gloom, because once again, I'm here to save the day with a mathematical solution. You see, if public transport costs $10 a day, and you successfully fare evade for 31 days, you can afford to cop the fine and still be $10 up. So just like every other piece of financial advice, the longer you keep it up, the more profit you'll make. But that's enough free financial advice for now, because the next type of person that you'll meet on the public transport network is just as annoying. And that is the Eshe. There's only two reasons that you find Eshe's on public transport. The first reason being that they spend all their money on Nautica from the sales rack at David Jones and TNs from Foot Locker, leaving them with a subtotal of zero dollars, which is less than the $500 required to buy an AU Falcon, therefore utilizing the only source of free transport available to them. And the second reason being that they don't yet know how to steal cars. Compared to ticket inspectors, it's very easy to spot an Eshe. Most of the time, ticket inspectors operate undercover, whereas Eshe's are never undercover. As soon as your train arrives 20 minutes late and that door opens, if you can hear shitty Aussie rap played on an even shittier Kmart speaker, I'm sorry to inform you, but it looks like your train has an incurable case of an Eshe infestation. For the billions of overseas viewers who don't know what an Eshe is, just think of a gangster from your home country, minus all the scary stuff, and about 13 years old. Unlike a real gangster, 90% of the time these guys pose no actual threat. But with that being said, avoid eye contact at all costs. Because just like an Enderman from Minecraft, if you look them in their eyes, they'll go ballistic. And due to the fact that you're locked in a metal box with them till the next train station, you're gonna have to be prepared to put up with up to 20 minutes of verbal harassment and constant threats of murder. And all of that mixed with the background music of Cursor playing off a stolen Kmart speaker that was only 15 bucks to purchase anyway, a scenario like this is enough to make a man's brain explode. But that's enough about Eshe's, because just talking about them is giving me a headache. 
Another very common sight on the Australian public transport network is customers riding on the outside of the vehicles. If it costs that much money to ride on the inside of the train, why not ride on the outside for free? Now, YouTube, if you're watching, I'm not at all encouraging this behaviour. This video, as well as all of my other videos, is purely educational. Now, it's highly likely that you've seen train surfing on the news, YouTube, or even in real life. But what some of you may not know is that train surfing is not only limited to trains. You can often find Australians catching some fresh air while hanging off the back of a train, tram or bus. And if they really have a death wish, you may even find them riding on the front. Now while we're on the topic of what's happening on the outside of the train, tram or bus, we'll get into the public transport related inpatient drivers. Thanks to things such as level crossings and constantly stopping trams and buses, a lot of Australian drivers are going to get held up by public transport. Now this wouldn't be a problem if anyone in Australia was actually patient. But if you've ever driven on an Australian road, you'll know that everyone's always got somewhere to be. Except of course that one dickhead who's always in front of you doing 40 in a 60 zone. But let's get back to impatient drivers. Because when these guys get stuck at a level crossing waiting for a train, or stuck behind a bus or tram picking up passengers, they'll do anything to get home two minutes quicker. Whether that's driving around the boom gates and getting cleaned up by a train, overtaking a turning bus on the wrong side of the road and getting T-boned, or flying up the left side of a tram at 160 k's an hour in a 40 zone just to get in front of it. Like I said before, these guys will risk their own life and the life of every passenger in their car just to get home 20 seconds earlier. Now for the next thing I'm going to talk about in this video, we have to go back inside the public transport network, and that is the drunk and disorderly. Like Eshays, there's two reasons why you'll find the drunk and disorderly on the public transport network. The first reason being that they've had too much alcohol and know that they're over the legal limit to drive. And the second reason being that they don't actually have a license because they lost it for drink driving. Now unlike Eshays, 90% of the time when they're not fighting people or arguing with the police, the drunk and disorderly can actually be a good source of entertainment for your ride home. You'll often see the drunk and disorderly singing. I'm a soldier, standing on my feet, and I surrender, and I won't retreat. Dancing. doing push-ups, doing acrobatics, turning the train into a makeshift slip and slide, and many other random things. But as you know, all good things must come to an end, and when the drunk and disorderly have a bit too much to drink, the byproduct of their activities can be pretty disgusting. If you frequently travel on the Australian public transport network, you'll already know what this is. And for those who don't, it's miscellaneous bodily fluids. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you might find something a little more solid. Now obviously I can't show this sort of stuff on YouTube without blurring it, but I can assure you from personal experience that it's pretty fucking disgusting. Even though companies such as Metro Trains claim that their trains are cleaned daily, unfortunately, Australia's train cleaners are outnumbered by fudge cutters two to one. And on that stinky bombshell, it's time to end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. If you'd like to be blessed by more teachings from His Holiness, your Ak Hunt. If you enjoyed this video so much that you stuck around right till the end, comment I like trains to let me know. And as always, a shout out to all the people who made a donation to the charity of my bank account. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Derp NZ for donating a whopping 50 New Zealand dollars. I'd like to say, Cheer my bro, that's choice as G. And I'll be sure to spend that 50 bucks on upgrading the locks in my sheet pen to keep you dirty bastards out. And if you want to help support the channel, head over to my website and buy a t-shirt or some stickers. Every purchase goes into a draw to win absolutely nothing. Outside of Box Hill Central, a man was sipping on cask wine. Heading down to Ball and McDonald's I was on the 109 Me and some guys from school Heading down to North Richmond We had to go through Victoria Street Where everyone's on heroin Oh and when I look back now The tram always seems to take forever Stopping at Victoria Gardens With Dazo and Hoyt Cinema 
All thanks to the 109 One man is sniffing on paint thinner Another man smells like glue I spend my evenings on the 109 tram And that's when I met you Standing up at the tram stop Opposite the Q tram depot You just been to the skinny dog Oh we got the tram together and we both got a Mikey fine We were on the 109 Yeah, we're on the 109 On the 109 da 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 da